Hello everyone and welcome back to another Let's Have a Chat series. Today we're going to be discussing quantitative versus qualitative research in regards to sociology. So, both of these allow researchers to analyze their selected data, though similar they do pose differences. Social scientists must understand when they have to use qualitative and quantitative in regards to their research, since the results will be demonstrated differently depending upon their choice. Quantitative analysis or qual analyzing data without using a numerical format, again all my s sources will be listed in the description down below, allows researchers to use a larger pool of data to sift through to prove whether or not their hypothesis is correct or not by discovering patterns and links within their data. Another way of looking at qualitative data is through observations or recalling past experiences to be put into interpretation. Sifting through the notes you've taken allows your research to have more substantial evidence to back up your claims. Conducting an interview with a person such as a longitudinal study where you have folders for every year you've seen the person gives you the opportunity to discover what changes occurred or with that person or if the years they have remained stagnant. Quantitative analysis allows e evidence using a numerical format allowing researchers to determine what is the main indicator of their research for example if age or household income plays a factor in the decision to buy a house or apartment after marriage. An example of this is if you are conducting a nationwide poll on the effects of gun violence in various uh, regions of the United States. Sending this to the vast majority of the country will allow you the opportunity to get a consensus of what the American people are feeling. In order for this data to then be of value quantitatively, researchers must assign a numerical value, there's a plane overhead, such as 1 being not much of a problem to 10 being a main problem and, a, and an issue that needs to be resolved immediately. These two forms of analysis have quite a few similarities. Both of these methodologies give researchers a way to look at the research in a way they would not have previously thought. Although they may have different ways of answering a research question, using both in tandem will only strengthen the final interpretation of your results. Let's say you're doing research on the effects of childhood poverty. You'll be conducting observations of children in a neighborhood qualitative, where you will have to see at what age the impact is the most apparent, quantitative. Without both of these research methods, we wouldn't be able to arrive to a clear understanding of the effects of poverty on children. Being unbiased and reporting accurately the findings of the research are major components in qualitative and quantitative research. If you only report out the findings that prove you are right, you are doing yourself a disservice and are jeopardizing your own credibility, not to mention your research as a whole. Despite having some similarities, there are differences between the two forms of analysis. With quantitative analysis, researchers have a scale that they use to sort respondents' answers to a variety of questions in groups. Whereas qualitative research does not use a scale instead the links and relationships of the data are used to represent the findings such as when looking back in history for example you are selling cookies at a bake sale Pardon me the first day you have numbers one through four represent the four variations of cookies right after the day has concluded, you count how many cookies are left on each display. This will allow you to categorize which cookie is the most popular, based on demand. Using the same scenario, instead of putting numbers on the four categories of cookies, you go back to your observations of which demographic of people liked which cookie better. With this information already at your disposal, you're able to determine that the white-collared workers like the chocolate chip cookies better compared to the blue-collared workers who like the raisin cookie better. Qualitative and quantitative analysis have their similarities and differences. 
one looking more precisely at a dilemma where the other wants as much data as possible to come to a conclusion to the research question. Both of these methodologies allow researchers to expand their research to greater heights. However, some prefer one opposed to the other, and that's perfectly fine. In my humble opinion, I value quali quantitative research. The sorry, I value the quantitative research method more. This method allows me to accurately pinpoint the extent of my research and to get to the root of my problem rather than having so much information that I will later have to discard while I'm analyzing said data or relying heavily on preconceived notions of the past, which can result in confirmation bias. This approach gives me more control over my research and will allow me a better avenue to explain my findings to colleagues and peers in a more clear and concise way. Overall, I see the advantages the qualitative approach possesses. I feel that quality far surpasses quantity. Thank you.